So I'm going to ask you, bless all those who give, bless all those who try to give, that we give this speech in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
A lot of faith is much more complex than a simple treasure hunt. However, some uh, similarities exist between the two. The faithful live a, the faithful lit life is a journey towards a destination always in sight but never quite within reach. No, uh, no direct line leads us lead from here to there. As Christians, we travel a road that stretches from faith to faith. It takes us on a dynamic uh, excursion through an uh, ever-changing landscape stretching from high mountains to deep valleys and passing through dreadful storms, followed by uh, moments of absolute peace and joy. None of those places is the destination. They're just steps on the journey, journey from faith to faith. But we uh, can rest assured we will eventually find ourselves walking on streets of gold as long as we continue to pursue, pursue a life of faith. Uh, then and only then will we work well, will the work of faith in believers' life be complete. Until the day, just like Paul said, we must continually walk by faith. Tap that out.
thank God for the goal of the church because the goal of the church is to stand for principles of truth and morals that have a healthy impact, amen, on our society. Amen. amen. Our lifestyles and what we believe about scriptural separation is not bondage but freedom to live peacefully, amen, and civilized in our society. Amen. We have a mandate to be different but not weird. Thank God uh, for the church. Everybody thankful for the church today. Really appreciate the church and the diversity of the church. And, amen. The power of the church and the things that the Lord uh, gives to us within the church. I do thank God for the church. We honor life and we do push against evil. Not because we're just looking for a fight. Amen. But because evil opposes life. That's right. That's why we push against evil. Because it's destructive. And amen, destructive and damnation is not just something that individuals will experience in eternity if they choose to live apart from the life-giving power of the gospel. They will also experience that in this life. And thank God that there is a church, though, that has a message. Anybody thankful here this morning that we got a church that have a message, praise God, that could help a man change lives? Amen. The church and its message is very powerful. It's a powerful message. It's, it's anointed. It, it, it is a message of hope. Praise God. One that Luke, Luke 4 and 18 tells us that this message is a message that, that lifts the poor. Yeah. Right. Uh, Luke tells us that this message is a message that heals the broken heart. Uh -huh. It's one that, that brings deliverance to the captives. Right. Amen. It is one that recovers. This is in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It's one that, amen, recovers sight to the blind. That's, that's the message that this church, amen, has. Praise God. It is it's one that liberates the bruised. Thank, thank, thank God for the message of hope. Praise God. Amen. I'm thankful this morning for the message of hope. I don't have to stay in a mess. Uh -huh. Thank God for that. Thank God that, that that message came to me. Praise God. Anybody thankful for the message that God, amen, released within this great church? We have a great message that brings help, hope, and healing. Amen. I'm thankful. If you're thankful, would you clap your hands to the Lord Jesus Christ? Praise God. Thankful for that. The scripture. Amen. Also gives the church a promise. Uh -huh. And in that promise, it tells us that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Right, right, right. It's a promise that the Lord gives us. But that means that the church was not bound by the pressure, amen, of its culture. It had a posture that invaded and took territory that was under the control of principalities and powers and, amen, rulers of darkness. Jesus, amen, also uh, declared that, amen, that, that, that this church was a, a, an aggressive church. Right. Said that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. That's right. Come on. The violent take it by force. In other words, the Lord was telling us that the church is not weak. Nope. It's not anemic. Nope. Amen. This is a powerful church. Amen. Amen. Right. The reason why it is a powerful church. Uh -huh. Amen. One of the reasons why is because it has a message that will bring change. Right. Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. It has a message that will help. Praise God. Anybody that really won't help. Amen. It is a powerful church entity and yet it has to overcome the pressures of its culture. That's right. It has to. 
Amen. That's why we thank God for strong pulpits. Mm -hmm. For so goes the pulpit, so goes the nation. That's correct. Thank God. That's correct. For strong pulpits. I'm not talking about being mean. Uh -uh. I'm not standing for truth and for righteousness and uh, for doing right and for That's loving good. right. And hallelujah. Thank right. God for the church. Amen. Now, we're not exempt in the 21st century church from social pressures. Uh -huh. We're not exempt. The North American church has to remain steadfast and not bend to the culture we live in. Man, as I was getting through this lesson here, it uh, the 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 the, uh, the thought came that the enemy, the enemy, is blitzing, and it's not calling an audible. No. When I begin to think about blitzing, I'm thinking about uh, the the offensive line, right? You got you got you a, a guard. In fact, you got two guards. You got two tackles and you got a center. And man, that's that's five on the front line. And man, then you perhaps, depending on the play that the offense is calling, you have perhaps a tight end on the front line. You may even have a halfback or a fullback in the backfield. Praise God. When the enemy is blitzing, he's blitzing from the end. He's blitzing from the linebackers. And sometimes, sometimes, He's sending free safeties and he, oh God, Go ahead, he's sending all kinds of people, praise God. And the goal is to bring the church down to, amen, influence what is on the outside. Its goal is to get on the inside and try to disrupt the offense. And, and sometimes this can be difficult, amen, because when the quarterback, and, and now today, Amen. There's this guy on the Dallas Cowboys. His name is Michael Parson. He's not as big as some of the linemen, the offense or defensive linemen should used to be. But he's mean. Right. He is very mean. And he's fast. Right. And nowadays the, the defensive ends are, are pretty quick. And they're, they're faster than what used to be. And when the quarterback is standing in the pocket, all the pressure is coming in on the quarterback. Go ahead, take your time. Hallelujah. And, 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 and if he's not quick, amen, if he holds the ball too long, he's going to lose the yardage. And, 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 and my Lord, and, 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 and part, they don't, even, they don't even really tackle like they used to. Used to, when I was a young man playing football, uh, uh, five, six, seven, I, I was. I wanted to hit him hard. Right. I didn't want to let him go. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you the truth. The coach, the coach used to say, uh, just go put Chuck on in there. He'll get him. <laughs> put Chuck in there. That's what the coach said. I, I went to a funeral not here not too long ago, and I seen one of my old coaches. And, and the first thought he had was, when we were on the football field and how I used to hit people on the football. I wasn't even big, bro. No. <laughs> he, 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 he said, but, and I, and so I would, I would hit him. Hey, Amen. If we running down the field and my quarterback is way, he's getting ready to score. And you behind me, I just felt like hitting you just because you was on the other team. <laughs> I just seen people levitate, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So nowadays they're not hitting like that, actually. They're not wrapping you up. Their goal is to strip the ball. Amen. Out of your hand. Amen. I've seen, amen, many continue on down the field because all they're doing is hitting and stripping. Yeah. Hitting and stripping. Hitting and stripping because if they can take your ball, that's right. It's possible they can pick it up and go down to the other side and score. Because the name of the game, the name of the game is to win, right? right? Amen. And that is the pressure. That that is the goal of the enemy. It's idolatry. It's perversion. That's it's right. pride. Right. It's 
the vision, praise God. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's, it's, it's doing its dead level best to get into the church. And Paul is now in, the, in, in Rome. Amen. His, his statement to them in Romans, the first chapter in the 16th verse, was not just something just to throw out. Paul emphatically declares, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I do think that this is a day that we, there are people that are ashamed to live for God. Right. But Paul is stating, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. More than a statement of faith, but a declaration that he is not conforming his message to the secular views of his society. Ah. Paul is is, is emphatically, emphatically declaring, amen, the secular society focused on power rather than sacrifice. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. The strength to the world is not strength to the world, is not relying on God. No. You push me, I'm pushing you back. back. It's, it, thank you for the message. Wednesday night, help me. It's, the world's ideology is not humility. No. Anybody remember the message on humility? Mm -hmm. How it is a choice. To humble yourself. Thank God for that message. Scripture is right as it states that the gospel is foolishness to the Greeks. And he even states that it is a stumbling block to the Jews. Go ahead, preacher. Praise God. But the truth of the gospel is this. It is still good news. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God help you this morning. It's good news. And, and by virtue, amen, of what it accomplishes, I thank God that it's good news. But in the gospel, there is a reality that you and I cannot escape. That's death. And who, who wants to die? You know, that is, that is the unsubmitted flesh, the, the carnal man, flesh, that has never really been tamed. Lifestyles that existed from some time, for some time, amen. How many would agree with me here this morning that, that it can be difficult to lay down those things? Yes, it can be. It can be tough, amen. Yes, I lived a certain way for so long, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there is a gospel. There is hope in the gospel, but there is gospel, a gospel message that wrecks my world. And it tells me i got to fix some stuff. Tells me I gotta I gotta talk right. Uh -huh. If I want the hope that the gospel brings, then there are some things that has to take place. And and man, that can be difficult sometimes. Not for y'all. Just for me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The gospel provides hope, though. But if we obey, amen. Uh, we have something to look forward to. Anybody looking forward to Streets of Gold? Yes, sir. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. The gospel message is really good news, but what it entails requires commitment. Somebody say commitment. commitment. Faith. Trust. Dedication. God's faithful to us. We need to be faithful to him. Paul said to us in Corinthians, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. We're saved by what? Grace. The gospel. Amen. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, 
For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. First and foremost, Paul is now explaining to us what the gospel is. Christ died for our sins and that he was buried, amen, and that he rose again, amen, on the third day according to to the scripture. Anybody thankful for the gospel? That's the gospel. And that's what saved us. Amen. This message will not, cannot be changed to appease the intellects or, or the social elites of the day. Agreed. Amen. Right. We, we, we've got to maintain the gospel. That's Thank right. God for the gospel. That's Hallelujah. Right. Amen. How I many know you still got to repeat it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir the gospel. You still got to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of The only way sins are remitted is through baptism in Jesus' name. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. The only way to, amen, get your ticket, amen, to fly is to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's right. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, amen, I asked the lady just the other day, Amen. Do you have the Holy Ghost? She said, what do you mean? I said, do you have the Holy Ghost? What she was wanting me to say is, do you have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? Because, and, and, and I actually felt her spirit. Right. Her spirit was against me in that regard. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, when you get this Holy Ghost, right. you Amen. are going to speak in Amen. tongues. That's right. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Clap your hands and thank the Lord. I know yes, this is practical. Yeah, I know. Amen. But this is the gospel. Hallelujah. And this is the only hope. Hallelujah. For the world. You've got to repent. You've got to be buried in Jesus' name. And, and, and in fact, the scripture says, if you don't have my spirit, you are none of mine. That's in Romans. Romans the 8th chapter. I need that Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen. We cannot. Somebody say we cannot. We cannot. Improve on the gospel. <laughs> amen. You know, changing this gospel to fit anybody. Amen. You got to change. I got to change to fit this gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and it doesn't stop there. Amen. It's death, it's burial, it's resurrection, and it's separation. That's right. It's part of the gospel. The power, amen, of the gospel of Jesus Christ rests in the application of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 This is what we believe. This is what we believe. People who have been held captive by sin, when they have applied the gospel to their lives, are instantly liberated by the power of God. Amen. That is what we believe. Because Paul states to us that there is power in the gospel. Yes, sir. Thank God for the gospel. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. That's why we preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. The drug addict can be set free instantly once they obey the gospel. That's right. Amen. 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 Help me, Jesus. I'm trying yes. to hurry up. Amen. I'll get out of your way. Here it is. I was thinking about the guy came in. Amen. His eyes was big as saucers. High. And high in a kite. He came to the altar. Repented of his sins. How many believe that God can make you sober? Yes. yes. Instantly. Yes. How many believe that? I'm telling you, I watched it. Amen. I 
watched it. I watched him come in high as a kite. And I watched him leave the church house sober because God, hallelujah, that's what the gospel will do. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For the preaching of the cross is to them, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Amen. But unto us, I say that's me. That's me. Which are saved is the power of God. Yes. Amen. The beauty, the beauty of the gospel is it is tied to the past, the present, and the future. Once we have repented of our sins, amen, the past, and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, amen, we are saved from the penalty of our past. Thank you, Jesus. I'm thankful for that. First John, the present, my little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. Uh -huh. And if any man sin, uh -huh. we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only. But also for the sins of the whole world. Yes. And hereby we do know that we know him. Amen. If we keep his commandments. He that, he that saith I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. Yeah. Is a liar. Well, oh, say that again. Say that again. And the truth is not in him. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. But thank God that we have an advocate. Thank God that we have somebody that, amen, if we fall, amen, we can get up because we have somebody, amen, to stand in a place. That will appeal to God for grace and for mercy through the man Christ Jesus. Would you clap your hands and would you thank God, amen, for the advocate that we have in Jesus. He was, he was the atonement for our sins, amen. That's why and I do appreciate it. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. One of the greatest messages, amen, in the Bible is the fact that we have the ability to go before God and repent of our sin. Amen. Thank yes. God for repentance. For repentance. Amen. Thank God that we can get right with the Lord. Yes. I'm thankful for Thank that. Thank Hallelujah. You. I'm thankful. Amen. Because uh, everybody in here, amen, we are not perfect people and therefore we don't always get it right. Praise God. And because we don't always get it right, we need that advocate to stand. God. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, help me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so I thank God. That we can go before God and that we can humble ourselves. Again, I'm, I, I, I'm really appreciative for the message uh, Wednesday night because humility is a choice. That's right. It really is. Uh, thank God for that. Amen. Future. It's for the future. First Peter uh, uh, 1, 3, and 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope. Lively amen. Hope. By, amen, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible. And un I love the word of God. Anybody love the word of God? Undefiled and that faded not away, reserved where? In heaven for who? For you. Thank you, Lord. Who, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. I thank God for this work of salvation. I thank God. Yes, it's a process. Amen. I am saved. I am being saved. And I'm looking forward to be completely saved. Anybody thankful for that? Yes, one of these days, the old songwriter said, soon and very soon, 
we are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Amen. One of these days, we're going to be shouting in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Praise God. Casting our crowns before him. Hallelujah. Because we made it. Anybody making your calling and election? Sure. Praise God. I refuse to allow anything, anybody, any situation stop me from getting to my goal. And that is heaven. That's my goal. Anybody going? Making my call in an election, sure. Praise God. The text said that, amen, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is what you and I understand. I mean, you understand there's, there's a scripture that I do believe that we understand. Isaiah 64 and 6. We are all as unclean as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness right. are as filthy rags. Yeah. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Leave is in the same book that we're studying for the rest of this month, Romans. Believe is in the same book, amen, that all have sinned and come short of his blood. Look at somebody and say, that be you. That be you. That be you. Look back at him and say, that be you too. That be you too. Praise God. Amen. Did I mess up the grammar there? It's all right. I did that on purpose. Now sometimes I don't do it on purpose. I that on purpose. God transfers his righteousness to us. Isn't that amazing? In the gospel, in the application of the gospel, the righteousness of God is transferred unto us. That's right. Maybe I can't do it myself. We can't save ourselves. And you know what that is? It's making us acceptable to him. Not only had it made us acceptable to him, it has now made him accessible to us. That's the blessing. Without this, you and I could not stand in the presence of God. We cannot proudly live in contrary, amen, to the ways of God and think we can stand in the presence of God. The Bible tells us that no flesh is going to glory in his presence. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, I reiterate, we must humbly adhere to the gospel Amen. and live by faith. Living by faith does not mean that valleys will be turned into mountaintops. Nor does it mean that crooked places will always be made straight. Yeah. It's not, that's, that's, that's not, amen, what it means. Amen. Thank, thank God. Hallelujah for for the co the collision that took place in Calvary. Thank God for the collision, Amen. Of both, Amen. Mercy and justice, Amen. Amen. How I many know deliverance is sure to come to us, Amen. But 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 sometimes, Amen. You and I are going to go through, Amen. The valleys. You're not necessarily going to always escape your valley. That's what faith is all about. Living by faith sometimes means, amen, going through a valley. Hallelujah. The Bible says in a moment and in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Amen. We haven't made it there yet. That has not happened yet. Praise God. Because it has not happened yet, you and I are going to go from faith to faith. From glory to glory. Mountains and valleys. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. About, about lion den, lion's dens. <laughs> Praise God. Faith, the, 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 the faithfulness, amen, that Daniel demonstrated unto his God did not, amen, stop him from going into a lion's den. No, it didn't. Hallelujah. But it delivered him while he was in the lion's den. Amen. Come on, thank God for faithfulness. Hallelujah. And we can look at his story and we can simply say, amen, that before he went to the lion's den, he was faithful. And while he was in the lion's den, he was faithful. Hallelujah. Thank God for Daniel. Amen. Because Daniel had to overcome a lion's den. And so do we. The gospel, amen, helps us, praise God, to overcome, amen, in difficult times. Hallelujah. I mean, know how he did it. He did it by being faithful to God. Yeah. He didn't quit. He didn't complain. He simply walked by faith. And then he was put on trial, amen, because of his faith. Sometimes we're put on trial because of bad decisions. Yeah. Praise God. How about Joseph? Joseph was treated wrong by his brothers. Joseph was falsely accused by a woman who did not know how to manage her lust, but he did not abandon his devotion and his dedication to a faithful God. Amen. This is Joseph. God's righteousness shows up in our life and takes us from faith to faith as we learn how to handle people. Maybe, maybe, maybe nobody else goes through any of these kind of things. But, but people who are jealous of you. Anybody had folks that were jealous of you? Yeah. Anybody had folks that, 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 oh, help me, Holy Ghost, that lied on you? Yeah. That, that Joseph is in a situation where he is being falsely accused. Anybody had some folks that would falsely accuse you? Hallelujah. When I learned. Amen. With Joseph, that Joseph never fought back. He let the righteousness of God bring deliverance, amen, to his life. And he said, what you meant for evil, praise God, God turned it around. That's what choosing to be humble is all about. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You let people talk. You let people wag that tongue. You let people do whatever they want to do. But you hold to your faith and watch the righteousness of God be revealed because you remain faithful unto the king of, I can't tell you how many times, and I know many of you could testify, I can't tell you how many times, amen, I'm no perfect person, but I have been falsely accused. Lied on. Anybody been that way? Yes. Thrown in a pit. Your name. All you got, Sister Ricks, is your name. Yes. And, and, and people take your name uh -huh. because, because I, I had a situation some time ago where they wanted to make me a pawn. And because I didn't respond, my response and my allegiance was to him. I wish I had him. Go ahead. And they took my name. Right, they do that. That's all I had. They took my name and took it deep and went through the mud. And, and, and for years, God had mercy. There were folks that, that had no idea, would not talk to me, would not say a word, right. would not, they, they wouldn't come. Amen. Oh, God. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's, it's easier, it's a little more difficult to look you in the eye. Yes. Oh, go ahead, preacher. And, 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 but I thank God for the righteousness. I didn't say a word. Come on. Come on. I said broken. Oh, Lord. I said hurt. Oh, yeah. Sorry, we all get hurt. Yeah. And, and we can't blame the church for getting hurt. That's right. People in the church hurt people. Right. 
It's not church hurt. No, church can't hurt. You go to Walmart, somebody make you mad, you don't walk out of, you, you keep going to Walmart. Right. Yeah. You don't stop going to Walmart because somebody in Walmart made you mad. You don't know. I mean, how many got mad at McDonald's? Oh, yeah. How many still go to McDonald's? Amen. You get mad at somebody in the church and, uh, and you call it church hurt. No, you just mad and something happened with somebody. Come on now. The righteousness of God will help us to grow up and get over some things. I'm not, this, this, I'm not saying this happened. But God forbid, you, I get upset at you, and I say, I ain't coming here. I ain't showing up no more. <laughs> I'm going to heaven. Amen. Come on. Come on. That's right. Because, because it makes me better. And we all got rough edges. Oh, yeah. We got them out of and the only way to get some of those rough edges smooth is to rub against things and people sometimes that you know is right. Come on right. now. But, but the righteousness of God is revealed, amen, when you learn how to go through difficulties and your faith remains. Yes. Yes. Can it keep us? Oh, glory. Yes. When they allow us. Yes, you yes, can. Come on. Yes. Can he keep us? Uh, uh, when they put us in a pit, can he keep us? Uh, yes, he Amen. When somebody falsely accused, come God, on, somebody. Yes. Joseph didn't want her. Joseph was dedicated to God. He wasn't looking for some kind of. Come on. Amen. Yes. Amen. I better quit. I'm glad Bishop came back. Because <laughs> he will fix. Oh, my mess. <laughs> Amen. Regardless of what you face. Yeah. One of my mentors, that was, he was faithful to me and helped me at a difficult time. And one of the things he just told me over and over and over again, and it's embedded in my spirit, just stay faithful. Just stay faithful. And along with that, he said, he would, he, this is what he would always tell me. Stay faithful and keep a right spirit and a right attitude. Stay faithful. Just stay faithful. Amen. Keep a right spirit and a right attitude. Hallelujah. And God will help you out. How many want to stay faithful to God? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Amen. I want to stay faithful to him. Would you just raise your hands to the Lord? Lord yes. God, I thank you for the gospel. Thank you for the power of God and the righteousness of God. Yes, Jesus. It's in this gospel. Help us to apply this gospel. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Lord. I got um, an important statement. The Bible says, save Responsibility. Choice. You can choose to obey the gospel, yeah, or you choose not to. Mm -hmm. There it is. We are free. Yes, we are. 
all ages. And God ain't going to make nobody do anything. You have to make the choice for yourself. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's so important. You only get one shot at this. Some folks get spread away young. Some folks middle aged. Some folks old. But the key to it, I don't care what age you are, get to it. Get to it. And stick with it. Praise God. Because we're all going to spend eternity someday. There are funerals being conducted today. And some scheduled for the next day. Right. Folks are leaving here left and right. And none of, us, none of us know our appointed time to die. Amen. How many folks really want to be saved? Lift your hand up. I do. I want to be saved. Yeah. Praise God. But there's only one way you can get saved. You got to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you got everything that you need to obey the gospel. Faith. You got everything. There won't be no excuses. Amen. If you have not obeyed the gospel, you have no excuse. Because you got faith. And God gave all of us a measure of faith. And what we do to the faith is important. You use your faith this morning when you got up. Hello? Mm -hmm. You use your faith when you turn on the light. That's right. You use your faith when you got in your car. Uh -huh. But you got to use your faith to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. Uh, we got restroom calls. <laughs>